D.L. Moody. He started preaching in inner city Chicago. And then he ended up, one of the first times he, was tra- he traveled over to England to preach, he was preaching in this one particular uh, church on a Sunday morning. He said it was just one of those times where uh, it seemed like nobody was listening. So he was scheduled to come back that night and preach again. He wasn't really excited about coming back that night after that morning. But when he got there that night, he said it was a totally different atmosphere in the room. As he started preaching, it was like people were sitting on the edge of their seats, like totally tuned in, everybody looking, nodding, listening. He got to the end, and he invited people to trust in Christ. And he said, if you want to trust in Christ, I'm going to invite you to stand in the room. And people all across the room stood up. He said, maybe they didn't understand me. So he told them to sit back down. He said, sit back down. And he goes through again. He said, I want to make sure you understand what I said. He walks through the gospel one more time. And he says, now, if you want to trust in Christ, I'm going to invite you to stand where you are. Well, more people stood the second time than the first time. So Moody's an inquisitive guy. wanted to figure out what in the world happened between Sunday morning and Sunday night. It was totally different. There was a bedridden woman in that town who uh, had not been at church that morning because of her illness. Her sister was there, brings lunch to her, and uh, the bedridden woman says to her sister, hey, how was church this morning? D.L. Moody preached, but not much happened. And the bedridden woman's eyes lit up. She said, I've heard about that man, how God has blessed his preaching of the gospel in America. I've been praying that he would come here, put aside my food. I'm going to fast today and pray that many people would come to know Christ in our city through this man's preaching. Same preacher, same place, same people, totally different power as a result of prayer. Like what if God is waiting to show his power in indescribable, inconceivable, unimaginable ways to a people who will take him seriously in prayer and their lives and their families and as a church. It's why why I have you in Acts 1. Here's a fledgling group of believers, scared to death in a small upper room. They're rural, uneducated, lower class, common Galileans. And what are they doing? They're not plotting strategies or discussing models or making plans. No, look at verse 14. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer. They were praying. And in response to their prayers, God sent his power. Don't you want to be a part of a story like this? God is doing what can only be attributed to his hand at work. And the power of God at work in your life in a way that can only be attributed to the glory of God in your life. When we are desperate for him in prayer.